this is Dave. We're back in the workshop. We have what I consider to be the most difficult speaker repair task, and we're going to try it today. And that's to replace a tweeter voice coil on a high-end speaker. Um, people that have high-end speakers usually like to drive them hard. And when you do that, they heat, overheat, typically. And first thing to go usually is uh, blowing the tweeter. So uh, we're going to work on a, a tweeter's uh, tweeter from a Paradigm Reference 60 version 2. And I had a customer who bought a pair of these. The tweeters were blown. Uh, looked all around for a OEM replacement, couldn't find it. Uh, I recommended to him that he buy from Midwest Speaker Repair. They have a, a non-OEM replacement um, that has been around for years to replace those. And he bought them, put them in. Uh, he was happy with the result. Um, and he said, here, why don't you just take the old ones and I had told him that uh, voice coil, aluminum dome voice coil repair is 50% uh, successful. That's my history of the success rate on it. And I didn't recommend trying it. I typically uh, wouldn't do it on a customer's speakers because it's just not that reliable a task. So he ended up giving them to me and uh, said, why don't you give it a try? And I said, um, okay, I took them and I did one yesterday and was successful. So I thought we'd make a video of the other one and we'll see if the 50% success rate applies or not. Uh, so this is the speaker itself and um, we'll go through the process. We'll disassemble it. We'll show you the what comes out and we'll show you the new replacement that we have to go in. It's not the OEM style exactly. Um, and we'll show you what the differences are. Uh, this came from AliExpress, I believe. Let's give it a shot. Let's start by taking a look at the model information. There it is, you can see that. Uh, we have to remove this. Cover plate requires a Torx bit, small format Torx bit. All right, we remove this. Uh, we see we have some thermal paste because this is used, this is uh, cast aluminum. It's used as a heat sink uh, for the driver itself. We'll set this aside. We don't need this. Then uh, what we have is the magnet. And the voice coil is mounted in this custom triangular shaped black ABS plastic frame. We're going to pry that up. Comes up fairly easily. And we'll show you this. All right, this has a small insulating sheet. And we have to remove that with a knife. All right, get it loosened up. And that insulating sheet comes off. Now, what that insulating sheet is doing, it's I'm just going to lay it here for a second. That insulating sheet is protecting the lead wires from shorting against the steel metal body of the magnet assembly. As you It'll be tough to see on the camera, but the lead wires for the voice coil run through some channels that have been cut into the this plastic triangular piece. And then this is an insulating piece to make sure they don't short. So we remove that. Um, quite a bit of ferromagnetic fluid has leaked out 
of the voice coil itself. And I'm going to show you an important trick that you can use to um, in, in such a case. So we're going to save this sheet. We're going to use that again. Let's take a minute now and talk about the ferromagnetic fluid in here and work on that. Um, I'm not going to get into all the whys and such of why you need ferromagnetic fluid. It is important for high power tweeters, however, to prevent them from overheating and still working correctly. I do not buy ferromagnetic fluid. It's extremely expensive to buy on the open market. I actually make it. And you can make ferromagnetic fluid fairly inexpensively if you have two ingredients. One is mineral oil, and the second is mica toner particles. Um, mica is magnetic ink character recognition. Uh, it's what's used in printing checks, the magnetic strips of checks down at the bottom of your check. You have those strange characters and those, um, that ink is a, is a magnetic ink. And that magnetic ink with iron in it can be mixed with mineral oil and used for um, reef, used to refill uh, ferromagnetic fluid in speakers. So what happens over time is the ferromagnetic fluid in here, let me get my needle, the ferromagnetic fluid that's inside this circular gap, which goes down in uh, several millimeters, uh, it dries up from the heating and cooling cycles and time, and it no longer performs its intended function. So if you get in here, and you can buy this, you can see it's this brownish, blackish, oily material. Um, and we have some, it has also stained, you can see on the uh, this insulating pad, it's kind of stained a, a brownish black color. What we're going to do is we're going to use some of the ferromagnetic fluid. And I've found that for the, in most cases, the material that's, and I can see in this one, this material that's in here is still in fairly decent shape. So we're just going to add to what's here. We're not going to go through the time and effort to take everything out. Uh, the way that we do this is I have a pre-mixed uh, amount of this in my film canister. And we take a drop, and this is probably going to be difficult for you to see, but we just let a drop of this run down into several places. We let it run down into the, the gap. So we've got, and I'm just using a sewing needle to apply that. So we've probably put the equivalent of one eyedropper drop, which was four or five needle drops uh, in there. And that's really all that's needed. Um, when, the, when the new voice coil, as you can see from this, you can see the voice coil ha is raised about an eighth of an inch from the surface. So the voice coil is actually going to go down into that gap and take up the remaining space so that the, the voice coil wires themselves will be swimming in a fluid bath of the ferromagnetic fluid. So we're actually done with the magnet for now. We don't need that anymore right now. Uh, what we do need to do, however, is we need to remove this dome and voice coil assembly from this black plastic piece because we're going to reuse the black plastic piece and um, I've tested I've owned this out earlier and I know that it has an open in it so I know that it's no good so we need to do some desoldering let's do that next we're ready to desolder this wire now I've stuck a needle stuck my needle under 
the coil wire into the terminal and I'm just going to use the wire to help could use tweezers in fact I tried tweezers but I couldn't grab it so I got the needle underneath there and we're just going to heat up the solder and once that melts it should make it liquid enough to pull the wire out and there we go so that lead wire has now been removed from the terminal you can see it kind of folds around this plastic piece and then the lead wire is embedded down into the black plastic piece so we're going to have to dig it and cut that out with the exacto knife but while we're here right now let's um, let's remove the other side as well Again, just using the needle for a little leverage, heat it up, and that's out. All right. Let me just show you a close-up of what we've done here. We've got the two uh, lead wires are desoldered from the terminals, but they're in these two channels in this black plastic triangular piece so it's going to be tough to see on camera i'm just going to use the knife and cut those out and then we'll reuse one of the channels as is but my my lead wires for my replacement are slightly different and so what i found on the first one is i'm going to you can see how the lead wires come out of the this is actually going to be on the back side and the lead wires come through but they run off one lead wire runs this way one re lead wire runs this way on my replacement they're different they run in opposite directions as opposed to pointing uh, 90 degrees from each other these point 180 degrees from each other so i actually am going to cut a new channel on one side here uh, in this black plastic piece so that I get a good lead uh, off the coil around the black plastic over to the terminal. So I'll show you that. Next step, remove the lead wires uh, from the channel of this plastic. You can now see that I've removed the two leads of the coil out of the two channels in the black plastic piece. And uh, in the process of doing that, you know, you I set it on the table, the, the dome itself gets deformed. Uh, it's already trash. But I think one thing you can see from this is how does that dome work? And you can see it works like a woofer dome. It can actually now you don't get this much excursion when the tweeter's in operation, but there's the out position, the in position. In this case, the aluminum dome tweeter on this paradigm is a hybrid. It's part aluminum, the silver part that you see, and then there is a some sort of a fabric mesh where it's it can flex like a like a foam surround but in this case it's fabric and polymer some sort of polymer fabric and that is what is glued to the the black plastic uh, here's the one that we've removed from the other tweeter and you can see this has a fabric looking material so next we have to remove this hybrid aluminum dome and fabric piece from the black plastic. We'll just use a simple knife. We'll work our way around it. Um, you can see our replacement doesn't have that. It's all aluminum. So not only is the dome aluminum, but the piece that it that is used to attach to the black plastic is aluminum. And then there's a, it just uses the flexing of the aluminum 
I suspect that will decrease the output somewhat over this version, which does have that fabric. Now, again, it's, we don't get this kind of excursion on a tweeter, but we do get some excursion, much smaller. And I suspect the aluminum one is um, going to be a little stiffer. So I do expect it's going to sound different. How different? Uh, I cannot. I won't be able to tell you that, but let's start the next process. Let's get this um, dome assembly off this black plastic piece because we need to reuse it. I thought that was going to take a long, little longer. That's the reason I did a um, time lapse, but that one went much faster than the other one. So you just get the knife under one edge and this is actually glued to that surface. So once you uh, make a breakthrough, then you can just pry it up all the way around. We're gonna scrape off any residual glue, clean it with alcohol, um, and then I'll show you how we're gonna cut a notch for the, uh, uh, the lead wire of our, our new uh, coil and dome assembly. Our black plastic piece is now cleaned. We used alcohol to remove any residual adhesive uh, because this, this is actually glued down to the plastic. So it's been glued and then we cleaned it with alcohol. We've cleaned out the two channels. Uh, what we need to do now is um, uh, make a, a separate channel. So on this coil, you'll see this end is tipped red. That's the positive, that's the negative. Positive uh, is labeled on the black plastic piece here. So essentially, this is going to be mounted As such. So we want the negative lead to come off and come over to this post. And if we look at that, the channel is, is set up to do that nicely. So that lead will come down channel just like that. Uh, this lead is going off in the wrong direction though. You can see the channel is meant for the lead to come this way. So we're actually going to cut a channel in the black plastic along this edge at 90 degrees. We're going to cut a little channel right here. And then, then that lead will be able to make its way across to this port because we need to come up around and then mount into the, uh, into the terminal solder. So let's cut that in the plastic and then we'll come back and then show you the assembly. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but we've got a new channel. I just used a little hacksaw blade. And we've got a new channel, which is this one, which is now at right angles approximately to this one. So this will catch the other uh, coil lead coming off. All right, let's uh, work on assembly now. One other tip I wanted to show you. I'm going to mark the orientation rotational orientation of where i want the dome relative to this so the leads are just barely long enough to reach the terminals and if i don't have the uh, orientation right my lead length will, will not be quite right i did want to talk for a minute on how to assemble this and get the dome voice coil assembly properly located on this black plastic piece. Now, <clears throat> the black plastic piece has these three holes in it, which align with the three nubs on the magnet assembly. So that magnet assembly is located relative 
to the black plastic piece very precisely. It has a very specific location where it goes and it goes nowhere else. It's high, high toler uh, tight tolerances there. <clears throat> the coil is going to have to be, can float until it's adhered. So we're going to put the, the two leads through, both leads. We're actually going to apply some CA glue, super glue, on this black plastic. Then we're going to pass the two leads through, but we're, go we're not going to allow it to touch down. We're not going to allow the dome to touch down until we know that the voice coil wires are properly located in the gap of the tweeter. Now, you've, if you've watched one of my other uh, videos, you know that when you do a foam replacement, this is uh, a case where you do this with the speaker actually driving live and on. I do a, I think it's a thousand hertz, 500 to a thousand hertz. And you know that that cone has been properly located relative to the spider, uh, to the frame assembly. You can't do that here because we can't have this being driven at the same time. We don't have the ability to wire it up effectively. Uh, you could clip some alligator clips on there and try to drive it, but I don't recommend it. So we're going to apply that to the super glue. We're not going to let it touch down until we get it slid in. Then we're going to quickly use, a, this is just a, a cap off of a spray can, which fits perfectly to the dome uh, assembly outside the moving area. And then we'll put some weight on it while the super glue dries. So let's go through that process now, uh, real time. And uh, you can see that uh, as close as is reasonably possible. Okay, we've got our, our CA glue around the edge where the voice coil is going to sit. So now we've got our orientation approximately correct. I'm going to pass our leads through, but we don't want this to touch down and start uh, drying yet. Okay. We line up our pins. Still not really touched down. There's our black plastic. Okay, it's time. Right. We use the other one to provide some weight while the CA glue dries. See if we can get a different view of that. So there you can see the flange of the aluminum dome is on the black plastic. The black plastic piece is, is seated properly right here on the locating pins. And then this is our cap from our spray bottle. And that's just supplying some downward force while the CA glue dries. So I suspect I'm going to have a problem, and you might be able to see it here. I didn't get my witness marks lined up. So um, that means I, my lead length uh, is not... An, my coils rotated counterclockwise too far, and my lead lengths are probably going to be too short to reach the terminal. So 
Well, then I have to bush rig something there to make that work. Okay, so my chosen method of repair here for my misalignment of my dome coil assembly on the black plastic is to lengthen the lead wire. And I'm just going to use the piece of lead wire from the one that I, the ones that I removed. I have some lead wire there and I've laid a length of it in line with the one that's been replaced. Uh, we fluxed them and we're just going to drop a little bit of solder on here once the iron heats up and hopefully that will be enough to um, keep us moving. All right, we've got our drop of solder ready to go. Let's get it on here and see if we can make this work. All right, that looks good. We'll do the other side uh, same way. And then I think we'll be able to solder our new extended lead wire over to our terminal after we've run it through our channel as originally intended. We work on the other one. All right, we may have to uh, put a little drop of glue in there to hold those in. Let's do that. Put another little drop here in the channel. Lay the wire in. All right, I got the excess glue. So that's that's ready to have the reapplied. Now we know the wires aren't going to come out of the channel. All right, our final step here is, and you can see we how much short we ended up. We're gonna bring these wires up, and there is a there is a pre-established channel on the back side here for the wire to run on top of the terminal or on top of the black plastic piece. So these two little channels are intended for just this purpose. And I did apply a little piece of insulating tape over on the first one I did. So let's just line this up. And I'm just going to apply, use the tweezers here to keep that pushed over. Pretty straightforward. And we'll solder that down. And then do the same on this side.
trim off the excess coil wire lead. All right. That looks all right. And we can mount this plate and give them a go. Actually, we don't even need to mount the plate to give them a go. Let's just give them a go. There we have it. Everything is appears to be working, so we'll do our final assembly and then do a full test. The lead wires should actually be soldered to the terminal on the other side. If you remember on the original, take a look at, uh, go back and look at the video. The lead wire came off this side, actually went down across the black plastic, down to the underside where the magnet is, and were soldered onto this backside back here. Same with this one. Just ran across the black plastic down and then soldered onto the back side of the terminal. And that way it wasn't necessary to worry about uh, the height, uh, particularly of these now extended wires that I have coming across the black plastic. And there was a proper relief here to accommodate that. Uh, we don't have that. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to make a little relief in this to accommodate the extended wires with the little solder bead that I have uh, for those lead wires. So that'll just be a slight modification on this. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, with the magic of a small Dremel tool, we've made a couple of relief pockets here, which will properly hold our extended wires and solder beads. So we're free now to mount this. There we go. Drops into place nicely. I am going to put the tape on there as I had previously. I think we're going to use a little piece of electrical tape in this case. We're ready for final assembly. We just pop the little piece of electrical tape on there just to ensure no issues. And all we need to do now is uh, reapply this heat sink beauty plate. And we're done. There it is. So there's our two terminals, which we can reattach to. Um, I think what I'm going to need to do is uh, go back to my original customer and um, offer these back to him if he would like to have them back as original OEM. And at least, well, what I'll do is I'll let him uh, test them and decide if he likes the sound relative to the replacements that he bought. And if he prefers these, um, I'll offer those to him. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was quite a project. Um, as I said, we typically have about a 50% success rate doing this activity. Uh, you really can't, until you take some measurements off of these, you, you can't tell how successful you've really been. Uh, but I will uh, provide some follow-up information on that later. Thank you.